following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. There are always many discussions or arguments related with this uh, topic of salvation. The fundamentalists, they believe, as they say, right, that they are saved just by believing. And actually this word, uh, believe, is something that should be studied, you know. Because if you look in the dictionary, believe is a word that is made uh, with two words, be and live. Be, you know, is to be or not to be. And the other word, live, believe, is uh, related with uh, love, or rather, libidus, which is related with love, desire, longing. So if you look for the signification of believe, etymologically, it means that which is desirable, or that in which you put the libido, the libido, in. This is, uh, I long for something, or I, I am longing for something, I yearn from something, right? Or I put my libido. You know, the word libido, you know, is related always with sexual matter. But in Latin, it's related with also with love. Meaning the chemical actions of the body. So believe means to put in action all that which is your chemistry, or that which is your, the energy of your body in something else. But with time, people are uh, transformed that belief in the, something related only with the mind, a thought or some information that you have in your mind and that you know about it. But you, uh, you don't know that in order to believe really, or to put in action that word, you have to put all of what you are in it in order to create faith. Faith is something that you experience with your consciousness. So you say, I have faith because I believe. That is, I have faith because I put all of myself, all of that, what I am, body, soul, and spirit, in order to work with this that I have uh, as an information in my head. Only in that way we can understand why uh, in the Bible is written uh, by Master Jesus. Whosoever believes in me, or whosoever believes in the Son of God, has eternal life. But, uh, uh, as I said, the fundamentalists, because they take uh, in the traditional way or common way, the word believe in the mind, they think it's just by having the information in the mind and by accepting, not rejecting what is written there, is enough. Without inquiring in the meaning of the word. Be is to be or not to be. And I said live or li love, libidus, is to put in action, as we always say, the sexual energy in action, the very essence of the being in action. 
in order to create faith, which is uh, a living experience. Of course, in order to to attain what we want, that is salvation, only a transformation. That's why in the Bible we find this that the Master Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew. Nay, ye do wrong and defraud and that your brethren. Know ye not that the, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived yourselves, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor perverts of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortionists shall inherit the kingdom of God. And the Master says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. But verily I said unto you, Till heaven and earth pass one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So these are, these are the words of the Master Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. You see, this last uh, phrase, for instance, says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the, but the one that makes the will, which means the law in the words, so the will of God, and you shall not do this, you shall not do that, right? of the, the law of the Father. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. And also in the same uh, uh, Gospel of Matthew, he says, You hear that they say you shall not kill. But I said unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell or fire. You shall hear that says you shall not commit adultery. But I said unto you, that whosoever look of a woman to lust after, after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. He's talking about adultery. Talking about thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not wear false witness, or shalt not swear in vain. He says, Thou shalt not force wear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. But I said unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shall thou swear by the head, because thou cannot make one hair white or black. But let your communication be, yes, yes, no, no, for whatsoever is more than this, come of evil. And you have here that shall honor thy father and mother, but ye made this commandment of God of none effect because of your traditions. Paul of Tarsus says about fornication, that shall not fornicate. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Has know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price thereof. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 
Now listen what uh, uh, the Apostle James says. If any man among you seem to be religious and restraint not his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this man's religion is vain. See then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, likewise faith without works is dead also. So this is taken from the gospel. So you see here that uh, even Master Jesus and, and his apostles are talking about that we have to perform deeds, we have to work in order to show what we believe in, in order to show what we have faith in. Because uh, it's not a matter of uh, just like uh, the, the fundamentalists think to raise the arm and uh, to be forgiven. He says, uh, uh, Paul says, uh, do not deceive yourselves because uh, idolaters, uh, uh, effeminate, uh, effeminate people or whatever will not inherit the kingdom and all that list of uh, things that is written there. And if you uh, inquire in the Gospels, you will see that uh, it's always related with work, something that we have to perform. It's not just uh, reading and memorizing and thinking that Jesus died for us already and this is done. What is true is that uh, salvation is something that we have to study. Because we believe, of course, in this word, we are using the word believe in the very sense of the word. We said we believe in Christ. But when we said we believe in Christ, we are saying we are putting ourselves, all that which we are, all which love is, with all of its essence, into what, into that which is Christ. Because Christ is not a person, but an energy, a force that we have to to create, that we have to build, to work with. That's why uh, the Apostle Paul always emphasized that we have to build, that we have to create Christ within. And this is something that you carefully read the Apostle Paul, uh, Paul you see that uh, he never points a personal human Christ. He always points an intimate Christ, an inner Christ that we have to build, that we have to create inside. And this is something very important because to accomplish the law, to fulfill the law, is very difficult. It's not easy. You see, when we are studying the Ten Commandments, and all the rules of the will of God, we arrive at the conclusion that uh, it's, it's impossible to fulfill them uh, in the very right way without the help of God. That's why it's written there is not uh, a just man, there is not only one good man in the earth that can do it. Of course, there is only one being that can help us to do it, and it's Christ. In order to incarnate the Lord, in order for Him to help us to fulfill the law, because as He says, He doesn't come into the earth to break the law, but to fulfill it, because He can fulfill it. He's, he's capable of doing it. We are not, but with His help we can do it. But the Lord comes in different steps, because the Lord is not a person. The Lord also manifests uh, Himself through any person in order to teach. But the Lord cannot help or cannot save any person if the Lord is not inside that person. This is something that we have to comprehend. We have to incarnate the Lord. We have to incarnate Christ. You see the same word incarnation coming from to be in the flesh that is the meaning of the word incarne, incarnation or incarnate to be within the flesh our flesh of course 
is our physical body, which Paul says is the temple of the living God. But in order to for the Lord to be inside of us, we have to begin with a commandment that says, you shall not eat from the fruit of the tree of good and evil, which is the commandment that states, you shall not fornicate. Because the sixth commandment, you shall not fornicate, is of course in symbology in Genesis. Because everything that is written in Genesis is alchemical, cabalistical. And that's why you find it says, from the fruit of the tree of wood and evil you shall not eat. Because the day that you eat from it, you will die. But you know and we understand that that tree is not a physical tree in the three-dimensional world, but a symbol. A symbol of the sexual force. Because when we study in Genesis, and then we understand and we study with the Sahar, and we comprehend that it is precisely that tree that uh, is a sexual force. Christ is the life. Christ is the light and the way. So, Christ is the seed of human being, is the seed of any animal, is the seed of any plant, is the life of a mineral. So in the very center of any life, whether it is mineral, plant, animal, or human, even an angelical, is Christ. But of course, we had to develop it. We had to create, we had to develop the Lord inside of us, to liberate the Lord. But if we are fornicators, or as Paul says, if we are idolaters, liars, thieves, etc., we cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is, of course, related with forces, with natures that are above this mechanical nature in which we are. And uh, we fall, as you read in Genesis, from that state. We were in that state. And because we created ego, because we created that second nature, or second psychology that we have inside, we fall into damnation. We fall into death. Because we ate from the fruit and we continue eating. To eat from the fruit of the tree of good and evil is, in other words, to fornicate. To fornicate is to spill the seed of our sexual organs. Or as we say, orgasm to reach the spasm in the sexual life like the animals. If we do that, we are always will be in the animal kingdom. The kingdom of heaven, as we said in all the lectures, is related with other levels in which our soul or consciousness can enter. But for that, we have to stop fornicating. Because we have to liberate the Lord, the, the fire, in order for the Lord to eliminate our animal nature and to create a human nature inside of us. So that is precisely the, uh, the explanation because we have to understand if we have to be saved, saved from what? If we have to be saved, we have to understand in which state we are, where are we going? So we are submitted because we, we fell into sin, into animal generation, which is fornication, because only the animal fornicate, when we said we fell into animal generation, we are said that we fornicated like the animals. So when we lost the seed, we lost the fire, because it's life. It is obvious that a second nature was created inside of us. That second nature is the ego, which is the animal ego. And the consciousness, as we explain, is bottled up inside that ego. And that ego is matter is molecular matter. Is that matter that we use or utilize when we leave the physical body every day when we are tired, physically. We are physically tired, we go to bed, we fall asleep, and we leave, or the soul, in other words, leave the body. But the soul is dressed with the ego, or bottled up within the ego, the animal desires. 
lust, anger, pride, envy, greed, gluttony, laziness, etc., etc. All of that's ego. And we are wandering there outside of the body with the ego, which is molecular, matter. That's why if you have dreams or you touch yourself in your dreams, you feel like you are matter, but it's not physical matter, it's molecular matter. That matter, as we explain in other lectures, is submitted to different labs. The consciousness, which is but a lab within that matter, is submitted to 108 returns, 108 reincarnations, we will say, in order to understand, into a physical body, or 108 lives, in other words. So we return 108 times, because that is the mechanicity of nature of the laws of nature, of the animal kingdom. Or we say, the mechanical laws of the intellectual animal kingdom. When the 108 times finishes, ends, what happens? The ego starts sinking, because it's the law. Evolves, devolves. Evolution, involution. The 108 time, or the last 108, Life, we will say, is a summit. Beyond that, there cannot be 109, 110, no. It has to descend. That descension is called in the Bible, second death. That descension is called Averno, hell, inferno. And uh, receive many names in which the ego or the consciousness, in other words, bottle up within the ego, descends into the infra dimensions of nature, into the infra molecular world. It's a descension, a return into the past, little by little, until reaching the center of the earth, because the matter of the ego has to be assimilated by nature, because that matter belongs to nature. It's taken from nature, and in the same way that the physical body returns to nature in this three-dimensional world, because when you are old, you die, whether you burn your body or they bury it, disintegrates, returns to nature, come to dust. The ego is also matter, but not physical matter, and also returns into nature. But the way that the ego dies is not the way, the same way that the physical body dies. The ego dies in what we call the second death. Why it is called the second death? Because the first death is the death of the physical body. So the second death happens after the 108 times. And then the ego descends and starts disintegrating the itself uh, in about a thousand years at least. It depends on the malignity or the density, we will say, of that ego. How fat or how strong that matter of that ego is. And how much evil that ego did when, was, when it was in the physical bodies, 108 physical bodies. In other words, in, in, in Sanskrit terms, we will say, it depends on how much karma that ego created in order to endure, because the infra dimensions, he has to pay what he owes. So of course, that is the luck, that is the fate, that is the goal of involution. And this is something mechanical that happens in nature. The consciousness shouldn't descend into hell, because the consciousness, the soul, the Buddha, the essence, belongs to the spirit, belongs to God, belongs to the being. But unfortunately, is bottled up, trapped within the ego. So, because it's trapped in the ego descends, the consciousness also descends. If the ego will suffer, the consciousness will suffer as well, because it's bottled up. That's why when somebody hurts you in this physical world, hurts you your pride, tells you something mean, you feel hurt. It's your consciousness, your Buddha that is hurt. 
is hurt within that pride. Because the pride is transforming that in pain. So our conscience is suffering. So we are submitted in this physical world to many sufferings, to many uh, displeases, uh, many things, sufferings and pains because of the ego. But a person with that ego it doesn't have any type of suffering as we have. Therefore we are suffering. But in hell, when the ego descends, everybody there is paying his own or her own karma and is uh, receiving the, the punishment to her own deeds or his own deeds. So that's why it's called hell. As we are now living in hell, physically speaking. Because everybody has too much karma. But in hell, it's worse. Because it's just related with, with karma of everybody. So, that is the, the fate that we said that everybody has. If we do not disintegrate the ego, and then we are, uh, we are going to descend in the second death. And because the ego in each one of us is very dense, is very heavy, that's why the great divinity sent many masters, many prophets, in order to help humanity, in order to teach humanity how to disintegrate the ego, how to be saved from the second death, from the punishment, from the pain and suffering that the soul endures within the ego. So therefore, the Lord Christ was incarnated here in the body of Jesus in order to show the way physically. Because in the past, the Lord Christ, our Lord, was doing this help to humanity in the secret way. Because this message or this uh, doctrine was taught in many other parts of the world, but in secrecy. But when Jesus of Nazareth, the great master of our mental, came 2,000 years ago, he came in order to teach that publicly with his own life. In order for all humanity to know the way to be saved from the punishments of the second death. And that's why when we read the Gospels, we read there the way, the rules, in order to annihilate the ego. The commandments that were given by Moses were ten rules in order for us to annihilate and, and to dis discover the ego in us and to do the work that we have to do. So then, uh, since 2,000 years ago, humanity knows the way publicly. But unfortunately, the way or the path which Master Jesus came to teach was misunderstood because people ignore about alchemy, ignore about Kabbalah and symbology and the path because the path cannot be explained in vulgar words because that path is related with something spiritual and when somebody experiences is related with the same language which that we find in the Gospels. So when you read the Gospels and you compare the experiences that you are having when you are living the Gospels in the internal planes, you find that it's the same language because it's symbolic. But humanity does not know about symbology, about alchemy and, and Kabbalah. So that when they read the Gospels and the whole Bible, they read it literally and they interpret it literally. And therefore there are confusion of tongues in this day and age. Many organizations, many sects that uh, sincerely believe, and but in this way they are using the word believe in the wrong way. They think that just by having the information or by accepting what is written in the Gospels, or by accepting that Jesus was came uh, that Jesus came 2,000 years ago in order to die for us is enough, and you are saved. But of course, uh, that is only uh, a wrong interpretation, because the Master Jesus came in order to teach the, the way of the Son of God, and we have to make a difference between Jesus and the Son of God, even though Jesus is the Son of God, because the Son of God is in Him. But the Son of God is Christ. And Christ is not a person. 
is universal, is an energy, is a force, which is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Christ is that force, that uh, energy, that divine force that is in the earth, in the moon, in the solar system, in this galaxy, is, is that uh, a wisdom that is everywhere, is universal. To personify that will be like breaking the law given by him to Moses. You shall not make any image. You cannot make any image of the Lord because it's universal. But when the Lord incarnates in any human being who is prepared, and then the Lord becomes with form. He humanizes himself. It's obvious that he humanizes himself in the body of Jesus. That's why the Master of Eramento is called Jesus Christ. This is nothing. This is Christ. Because the Lord, the Son of God, Christ, which is universal, incarnated in him in the Jordan. It's written there in the Gospels. But before the Lord Christ incarnated in the body of Jesus, he also incarnated in the body of Moses, in the body of all the prophets, in the body of all the other masters of other religions, like Muhammad, like Buddha, Hermes Trimagistus, and many other masters of the past incarnated the Lord. The difference between Jesus and the other master is that Jesus came in order to teach with his physical life, with his physical body, the path physically. While the other masters only taught the path because that path is always lived internally, spiritually speaking. It was something very extraordinary that a man, physically speaking, could show the way physically with his own life. And that's precisely the, the great mission of the Master Jesus. But humanity interpreted that in the wrong way. And now the fundamentalists, they believe that uh, the Master and Jesus of Nazareth, died 2,000 years ago for the sins of everybody. That uh, if you accept him and you believe in the Master of that came 2,000 years ago, it is enough. But I never saw any fundamentalists, in a single of them, without anger, without uh, pride, without lust, without uh, laziness, without gluttony, just by believing, as they say. They said, I believe, I'm saved, but they continue with their ego inside. So therefore, they are just cheating themselves. They are not saved, because that ego cannot go to heaven. When I say this, it's coming to my mind, Nicodemus. When Jesus of Nazareth is teaching to him, he says, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven if you are not being born again. Master Jesus doesn't say, hey, if you don't believe in me, you are not entering the kingdom of heaven. He says, if you are not being born again, you, don't, you are not uh, entering the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus says, how? can this be? And the Master Jesus says, Well, are you a master of Israel, a rabbi, and you don't know these things? Meaning that he shouldn't know it. If people think that it's Jesus, the only one that you have to believe, but Jesus, the answer here is saying that he should, he should know it. It's not related with his personality, with his physical body that is there, is something related with the doctrine. If he's a rabbi, if he's a priest, he should know that in order to be born again, you have to know what Christ is, what the force of the Lord is. And then the matter explains, what is flesh is flesh, what is a spirit is a spirit. It is very clear explained there, he's not talking about the believing in him, but because Christ is incarnated in the Master Jesus, after, after that, he says, well, if you believe in the Son of God, okay, and then they assume that if they believe in Jesus, by they, I repeat, the meaning of the word, believe, to put all yourself in something else, 
to work with that. It's not just putting in your mind some theory. That's why uh, Nazism is not a type of sect in which you have to believe in the conventional way that people understand the word believe. That they have to accept things and this is it. But you, you have to discover that for yourself. You have to work with yourself in order to create faith. When you put in activity all of you are, the three brains, your mind, your heart, your sex, and all your conscience. That is what is live, love, all your strength in what you are, and then you create faith. But faith is the something that you have to develop when you incarnate the Lord, which is fire. Because the Lord is Ingrid. Ignis natura renovator integra. The fire renews nature constantly. That's the meaning of Ingrid. Latin. When you incarnate him, when you assimilate that fire, he starts saving you. Meaning, he starts teaching you inside the way to annihilate the ego in your physical body. Because this is the way. The way of the Lord is to annihilate what nature is going to do in the second death. You will do it here by your own will, with the help of Him, by the help of the fire. And then you walk in the path. And then we have to learn how to assimilate the Lord in different ways, because the Lord is everywhere. It's fire, it's life, it's light. We know that we have it in the sea, in our sea. So when we assimilate the fire of our sea, we are liberating the Lord. But also we can attract the Lord with different practices, with different forces that we know. In order to assimilate that energy into our psyche, into our soul, spirit, and body. That's why there are many different uh, practices, uh, rooms, forces, in which you assimilate that force. In order for the Lord to start in you, doing that that you are longing for, which is precisely to save yourself as Buddha as you are, as conscious as you are, from falling into hell, from falling into the inferno, into the infra dimensions. Because it's not really, certainly very uh, pleasant to be disintegrated in hell. To be annihilated there in order to be liberated is very painful. As painful as the process of liberation might be here in the physical world, that is nothing in comparison with the process of the failure ones that fell out the fallen in into, into hell, into the infant dimension, in order to be disintegrated through the second death. And that is why the process of salvation is a process of working. Faith without works is, is nothing. It's a, it's a type of work in which uh, we have to study, of course, the Gospels very carefully. Because in them, uh, I'm reading all the codes, all the rules that we have to follow. But we don't have to read them literally, without knowing Kabbalah, without knowing alchemy. Without alchemy and Kabbalah, we will fall into wrong interpretations, like it's in this day and age. For instance, uh, in relation with the Lord, there's a process that is called the Son of Man. And then everybody talks about that. The Son of Man coming in the clouds and everybody going into the air. So of course, it's a matter when you read that in the Gospel, it's so beautiful. It says that the Son of Man will come like the lightning coming from the east to the west, like a ray of light, whatever. You will see, it says, the Son of Man coming in the clouds. When the people read that, and still they interpret that in a physical way, literally, they think that the Master Jesus of Nazareth that came 2,000 years ago will come in the air, in the clouds, with his angels, physically. And that all of those that believe, intellectually speaking, that they accept that which is written in the Bible and the Gospels, will float in the air 
and then go out and will reunite with him. Just because they believe in that. As the Master Jesus says, not only because you said, Lord, Lord, you will be with me in the kingdom of heaven, but those ones to fulfill the will of my Father who is in heaven. This is very clear there in the gospel. So, of course, uh, in order to understand what is the Son of Man, or who is the Son of Man, we have to study Kabbalah. Without Kabbalah, it's impossible to understand what or who is the Son of Man. Because the Master says, until you don't drive the Son of Man, you won't understand who am I. And when you study Kabbalah, you understand that the Son of Man is Tiferet. This is how you find in Kabbalah, Son of Man, Tiferet. Because actually, this uh, title, Son of Man, is also given to a prophet, Ezekiel. If you read Ezekiel in the Bible, you will find how God calls him Son of Man. Because only a Son of Man can understand the doctrine, the wisdom of God. A Son of Man is not everybody. In order to reach that level, one needs to be born again. Nobody can see the Son of Man without being born again. And what is to be born again? To create soul. This is another thing that we have to understand. One thing is to liberate the soul from the ego, and another is to create soul. One way cooperates with the other. Nobody can create if he or she doesn't utilize the sexual energy. It's impossible to be born again without the sexual energy and activity or the intervention of the sexual force. It's impossible. Only the sexual force creates. And that's why chastity is indispensable. That's why in all religions it's always start something about sex. Because we have to be in chastity. In other words, we shall not fornicate in order to be born. We shall not commit adultery in order to be born. Because it's the sexual energy in relation with the science of alchemy that must create inside of us the soul in the emotional world, the soul in the mental world, and the soul in the causal world. Or we will say, the electronic body in the emotional world, the electronic body in the mental world, the electronic body in the causal world. Or in other words, the astral body, the mental body, and the causal body. That is precisely what uh, Paul of Tarsus called the heavenly man. Could you find here in the earth, the earthly man, the physical person here with his defects, vices, and errors. But the heavenly man has to be born. The heavenly man is being born only when the energy of the Lord Christ is in activity, when he's liberated through alchemy, through chastity. And then we create astral body, mental body, causal body. And when those solar bodies are created, behold, the heavenly man is created. That heavenly man is what the Bible calls the Son of Man. The Son of Man is only created when the soul, the consciousness, reaches different according to the tree of life, according to Kabbalah. When the soul reaches different, which in esoterism is the fifth initiation, mere mysteries, and then we find the Son of Man. The cloud is precisely the mystery, because only those that are in the level of the Son of Man can understand the wisdom of heaven, because the astral, mental, and, and causal bodies give us the tools, the senses, in order to understand the language of God, the language of the Spirit. And then the, this is how the end of the ego in the very radical way starts. The annihilation completely of that animal nature starts. Because when the Son of Man comes, then the earthly man has to die. 
completely. Radically. And then the salvation of the whole soul and the transformation of a man into a superhuman comes in activity. This is the outcome. But of course, one is to assimilate that force, which is Christ. Because without Christ, it is not possible to create or to be born again in the world. It's not a matter of believing, but of putting in, a, in, in this way the word believe, as the dictionary explains, to put your libido as energy in order to work in yourself. Be libido, believe, to pull out the essence of what you are, in other words, in activity, that is believe. To pull the essence of what you are physically, mentally, psychologically, spiritually, in activity. That's believe. And then when that is in activity, the new man is being born inside, a new being. Little by little, bit by bit. It's not a matter of one week, one month, or one year. The calculation that has been made is about 40 years, 40 years, for the Son of Man to be born in any human being. But remember that that is one point, the coming of the Son of Man. Salvation is also related with it, but salvation can come individually speaking, when we apply the techniques and so in order to save the Buddha, the essence, from the ego. And then the Son of Man can come after that. Because he's in different steps. The Lord first saves us from the infernos of nature. And later on, he starts saving us from other types of mechanical forces that are above that we do not understand yet in order to finally to enter in the very higher, higher level. But the main thing in this day and age is to be saved from the second death. That's the main thing. When we are saved from the second death, and then the, we can talk about the second coming of Christ. We can talk about resurrection and ascension, which is something spiritual. But how can we talk about resurrection, ascension, with lust, anger, pride, greed, gluttony, laziness, envy inside of us? Nobody can resurrect with that. It is written, that cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's written there in the gospel. Do not deceive yourselves, because lust, anger, pride, vanity, laziness, gluttony, greed, etc. cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And if you have that inside, how are we going to ascend into heaven? That's ludicrous to think about that. And of course, the mission of the Master Jesus of Nazareth 2,000 years ago was to teach that publicly, but he did it in parables, because humanity was, was not prepared not to explain as we are explaining now. And if humanity at that time would not understand and do it psychologically as it be done, as it had been done, everything would be different. But now we have millions of Christians that are lazy, that they are expecting only, everybody is expecting the second coming of the Master Jesus, they say, that will come in the clouds and just with all of their ego, all of their errors and defects, they will go into heaven. Because they are interpreting the scriptures in a very, very wrong way, in a very ludicrous way. So we don't have to fall in that uh, mistake and to comprehend that uh, salvation is a matter of putting our will with the will of God and working with the Lord, which is fire, which is the Lord, Christ, the wisdom. That's precisely the way in which we can be saved. Because in this day and age, most of uh, the souls which are incarnated in the physical world are in the last lives. 106, 107, 108, and no more opportunities to return to the physical bodies. Most of the souls are entering into involution into the second death because their ego is very alive. Their ego is very strong. 
bad news is that there's a lot of people there that are teaching the wrong things. A lot of people with good intention that are following uh, blinds, uh, blind that follows the blind, uh, both will fall into the abyss. It's not a matter of just accepting the doctrine or, or reading the Gospels and having a nice life. It's to, to be profoundly uh, responsible, meaning to go inside of our psyche and to, with the help of the Lord Christ, that we assimilate in different ways to annihilate our lust, our anger, our pride, our envy, etc., in a very, very responsible, introspective way. Uh, it is uh, in this day and age. It is stuck in that in this way, very clear, because uh, we are in the end, the beginning of the end, and uh, we have to help our fellow, those that wants to to be saved. They have to learn that it's not a matter of being fanatic. It's a matter of working psychologically in oneself. It's a, it's a matter of allowing the Lord Christ to enter into us. Nobody intellectually accepting a doctrine or intellectually accepting the, the gospel. No, it's not the way that the Lord enters. But by applying the doctrine in a physical, mental, psychological, and spiritual person, which is of course a matter of energy, practices, exercises, meditation for instance is one of them, chastity is one of them. But not the chastity that we find in the outside world, that they think that chastity is celibacy or sexual abstinence. No. Chastity is a way in which we put in activity the sexual energy. If we are single, we know the way in order to put it with pranayama. If we are married by my tuna with our spouse and to follow the commandments. It's not like other people say, oh yeah, Jesus came and so the, the old law is already obsolete. Meanwhile, Master Jesus spoke very clear there that you shall not commit adultery. But even, he says, not, I'm telling you this, now is more. Not even desire the wife of the neighbor. Because then you commit adultery in your heart. This is even harder. He says, you have him that you shall not kill. Well, I tell you, he says, if you are angry with your brother, you are being punished. And if you read carefully, so the master says, I, uh, I didn't come to, to break the law, but to fulfill it. So then why, if the master came to fulfill the law, why or his followers are saying that it doesn't matter. We don't have to fulfill the commandments because that is the whole covenant. God has no two minds. It's always one mind. Different hierarchies, different times in which different beings, different angels take over the work of God. Yeah, it is like that. In ancient times, before Jesus came, other beings were in charge of the soul. When Jesus came, he was in charge of the soul. But the same way, the same rules, explained again and again and again. Now we are again. And other beings are in charge. And teaching the same things in other words. But are we explaining that it's the same thing? We find the same rules in other the sacred books. The Bhagavad Gita, the Bible, the Quran, etc., etc. That's why in Gnosticism, we find all of that, and we comprehend all of that, because we study Kabbalah and Alchemy. And we find that it's no contradiction with all the great doctrines of all the great masters, because we are uh, deeply uh, serious in this, in this matter. The Lord, my Redeemer, your Redeemer, which is Christ, was to incarnate in each one of us. He wants to fulfill the law of God in each one of us. He wants to help us. Because it's impossible to fulfill the law of God just by ourselves. We need the help of Him. And that's why it's the doctrine. We have to assimilate Him. If we assimilate Him in different levels, in different ways, we will be uh, successful. It's obvious that the Lord comes in different ways. In one way, for instance, uh, in the conventional way, when the people believe that they believe just by accepting things intellectually, the union of those people that are having their mind in that brings a, a special type of energy. You can experience that in many religions, and you receive what is called the baptism. Of course, the baptism is in relation because they are invoking the Lord. The Lord is everywhere, and the Lord hears those are invoking. 
And of course, uh, when there is a type of uh, uh, baptism like that, where that uh, time in different religion, it's always an experience or a certain force that enters. Like when somebody, individually speaking, experiences the very essence of the Lord in a satori, samadhi, an ecstasy or rapture. I experienced that. And that cannot be compared with those experiences that you receive in, in the conventional religion. This is like millions of times stronger. And you experience that, but that doesn't mean that you are sick. That is just compassion mm -hmm. because the Lord loves us. Well, it's, it's a way in which a gift, in which you receive some uh, strength to say, okay, now go ahead, do my work. In many ways, you experience, uh, I personally experience many, many times in different ways that type of experience. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, an extra energy that we receive from above in order to keep doing the work that we have to do. But even though in certain levels, for instance, in India, there are many great meditators, yogis, that are skillful in entering to samadhi and enter the consciousness enter a certain level that they receive a tremendous shock of energy. While they return to the physical body, all the senses of the soul are in activity, all the chakras. And because that energy, which is the energy of the Lord, put in activity all the chakras, because with that discipline they acquire that, they fall into the error, the mistake, to think that they are done. And that's precisely one of the great mistakes. And they keep doing and doing and that because they become skillful in doing that frequently. And they receive more and more and more. But the ego is still there, very alive. Some of them they, they develop mystic pride and mystic vanity, which is worse than the common and common pride, because that pride is like a holy pride. And uh, that is something that they develop, but they are so imbibed in that Christic energy that if you tell them that they have to annihilate the ego, then they are still gross and material like anybody, even they are very illuminated, they won't accept that. And they will think that you are envious, of jealous of their enlightenment. And uh, in different ways of that, this is something very strong because the experiences that we receive in, in conventional religions here down, the energy that they receive there is very, very low. But they receive because there is always compassion. The Lord always gives and gives in order to help. But it's something that people misunderstand. If you receive energy, it's not that that energy will save you it's like if you put gasoline in your car, if you don't drive it, if you don't know how to drive, it's worthless. You know, you have to know how to drive the car and how to go and make the trip and come back. So that is gasoline that the Lord gives. So you want to do the work, you have to go there and work the trip. Okay, I'm healthy, I'm compassionate. This is my gasoline, my energy. Enjoy it. Do what you have to do. But people receive that and they just go in lazy, in lazy way. Oh, I'm already saved. Meanwhile, lust is very gross and very far inside of them. Anger, pride, envy, greed, plotting, laziness, etc., etc. During the path, in many ways, we always receive a lot of help. Beautiful experiences and great energy shocks. But we don't have to stop there. Just because we're receiving that, we, we are done now. To the final liberation, the final salvation is something that we have to cooperate with the Lord. The Lord is entering into us, let's keep doing it. We have energy in order to destroy the iniquity in us. And we have to find also the technique in order to apply that energy in order to annihilate the devil inside of us. Otherwise, we are just wasting time. Imagine how beautiful it is to experience that, because it's beautiful. That type of uh, energy that enters and you feel really euphoric. But to feel that always, second after second, without losing a moment. That is precisely salvation. But to, to feel just for a while, like say, okay, you want to spin what is to be with me? Just, this is it. Just a little bit of spirit. But uh, somebody that is saved is experiencing that second after second. He's living in a blessed 
And that's precisely to be uh, in a rapture, but with an ego, of course. It's impossible to, uh, to experience that with the ego alive. The consciousness is the one that experiences the rapture or that type of bliss, never the ego. When you lose that type of experience, and then your mind, your ego starts thinking, I would like to experience that, I would like to endure that. And then your greed, your covetousness, wants to experience that. And then you fail, because the devil, the ego, cannot experience that. One is to annihilate that and not to experience that. So we have to understand that there are two natures inside of us. The ego that wants to experience divine things, and the consciousness that has the right to experience that. So if we have inside of us greed, I remember one time when I asked the Master, I reached a certain level as a Master, but I understand that my being is in that level, but I don't experience such a certain thing that I should, I said, right? When I said that, he just looked at me and said, stop being greedy. And then, what was he, he telling me? It's your ego, the one that wants to experience that. Annihilate that greed, and maybe you can get it in your consciousness. If you visualize inside of you, you will see, your ego always wants that. Oh, but such and such fellow is experiencing that. Why don't I? You see, I, that I is not the being. That I is the devil that we have to annihilate. It's precisely the ego that wants to experience that. The ego cannot experience that. The, the ego can experience hell with drugs, marijuana, cocaine, and all that. But heaven? Never. Nicodemus says, how? Um, an old man can enter into the womb of her mother and be born again. An old man. You know, the old in us is the ego. Can the old devil ego that is inside of us enter into the womb and to be born again? No. The ego has to be annihilated. The one that is being born again is the, is the essence, the consciousness. It's something that experiences the soul, not the ego. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.